this is the third video in the ECC to S4 HANA migration videos. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim Rutherford. How you doing? This is video three of four. I highly recommend that you watch the other videos. This was not meant to be modular in nature. So video one is an introduction to me and the migration. Video two is about hardware and database changes, and this one gets into the uh, actual user interface and some of the end user change management issues. So this is more about the end user experience. Now, what we mean by that is the SAP GUI, as you know it, has started its end of life. And this is a, an official SAP graphic here. So the latest GUI, the 7.6, was released in spring 2019 and has an end date of April 12, 2022. And what that means is, is it will no longer be supported. After that, no more SAP GUI. And it's not like it's going to implode and you never get to use it again. It means if Microsoft updates.net and it no longer works, well, it no longer works. So that is something to be taking into consideration within this. The SAP GUI is familiar with people. Uh, so yeah, it's going away. So here's, here's the funny thing with this. When I started, uh, I, I was teaching a, uh, a workshop in the SAP, SAP University Alliance in the, in the next gen. I'm teaching the workshop and a professor said, Hey, I hear they're getting rid of the SAP GUI. And I said, they'll never do that. <laughs> There's no way. Well, it's sort of true. Um, the, and then what, what I mean by sort of true is, while the Windows-based SAP GUI is going away, the web GUI will still be around. So that is supported. I have not seen an end of life for that. So this is very similar to what the SAP GUI looks like. It does have the fuel review on here. That's not changeable at all. But this is a display purchase order here for within SAP, and then this is the COIS report, C-O-O-I-S, for the production schedule. These both look very similar to the SAP GUI. Those still, as far as we know, will be around in the future. There's also SAP Fiori, which you've probably heard about, which is able to kind of encapsulate what that T-code looked like and put it within Fiori. So kind of making the Fiori app. So this is MD01 MRP, and this is CO41, collective conversion of uh, plan production orders. So they look very similar. So it's not like that familiarity of the SAP GUI is going away. Both do require a web browser, which means that they're limited by the web interface. So from an end user perspective, it might look the same, but if you have somebody maybe who's been working in shipping for a long time and they know if I tab five times and press the cursor key three times, then I can start typing. And then all of a sudden they have a mouse. You know, that's, that, it doesn't work in a web browser anymore. Plus, you're not taking advantage of Fiori within this. Now, how do you take advantage of that? First, let's jump back. This is an actual SAP slide that I stole. Your brain is wired for visuals. So understanding data is really something that is much easier for people to do visually. So finding the answers to questions, easier to do visually. And there's all kinds of research that has been done for that. So I'm gonna show you, this is uh, MB52, the inventory report. You look at this and it's nicely organized, the information is there, but it's not easy to tell what's going on. So which one has the highest inventory? Well, you have to scroll through and look at all, oh, it's a one kilogram blueberries, okay. This is also showing it's a snapshot as of right now. Within SAP Fiori, kind of an inherent thing. It doesn't take as much customization, you just kind of say, do this, and it pops up. Now, this is by day, inventory by day. And this is not as easy to read, but realize, it has all the different material codes in it, but just like within the, EC, the SAP GUI, there's a selection screen, there's a filter. You can sort it by different things. There are also different ways of viewing this. So looking at this, it all kind of looks the same, I don't know what it is. Looking at this, hmm, well I can tell that this gray one here has a lot of inventory data day to day. Why are we sitting on that? Which one is the gray one? Oh, it's the one kilogram blueberries. So we have here the one kilogram blueberry, as you can see, it has the highest amount of inventory. Not as easy to see as it is right here. So even this jumbled mess here, <laughs> showing all of them stacked on top of each other, you can see from day to day there's about the same inventory. Because it could be that production just got through and we're sitting on a brand new inventory that hasn't been sold yet. Well then it would be lower, 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 and then higher. This is it's pretty high every day. There's something going on with that inventory. We need to do something with it. So again, the visual aside. Now here's the other part of SAP Fiori. It is customizable. Ooh, scary. 
<laughs> I know. And I've actually done a design faux pas here. I took customizable and I made it bold, I italicized it, I underlined it, and I changed it red. And I did that to really make it stand out. Fiori is customizable. And you know, no one customizes SAPA. SAP does not allow that. But Fiori is different. Again, remember that from video one, if you haven't watched it, you used to watch this. With the new technology, they decided to write the code. They've, and there are a few different things that come together with that rewriting of code. What SAP has done is realized that many different companies were customizing the same processes. And they were customizing them because SAP inherently didn't do it. Well, they've changed those. They've made it so that those processes are now part of the standard code, part of the standard process. So you don't have to customize. Another part of it, and this is mostly on the, the finance accounting side, ECC had two general ledgers, one for finance, one for controlling. Now, S4HANA has one GL for everything. So again, rewrite the code, take advantage of things. Why are there two general ledgers? Well, let's just do one. That same kind of approach to all of this is being applied to the user interface. So it's that same reliable back end. So the processes are still there, the data is still there, but everyone wants a more flexible interface. This has been an issue with SAP from the beginning is that we can't customize our interface. So again, rewriting the code, now it's a flexible interface. You can now set it up so one screen has everything that you need. So this is from a really old and absolutely irrelevant SAP blog. <laughs> but again, you can see, this is what Fiori looks like when you first log on. There's kind of a dashboard. These are called tiles, and if you click on them, they give you more information, whether it's a report or it's an app. But right on top of the tile, it's giving you some feedback. There's some analytics built in. Once you click on it, you get to see a little bit more. Again, it's visual in nature. It's inherently visual. So things get to be customized. You know, from a process perspective, within the simulation that I use within the classroom and also within uh, industry, we have the production process. And very simply, we go through this. It's a much simpler version of what companies are actually doing. But these are the, the general instructions here. So we have the Create Planned Independent Requirements, MD61, Forecasting Sales. So here are the instructions. Click on Product Group, put in your company code dash F, and click Enter, okay, in the next screen. Enter the forecasted quantities in the second date column. We don't know what these are. We have to know what the material code is. Put them in here, and we click Save. Then we open up. MRP, so MD01, so MD01, enter, click enter two more times, and click continue. <laughs> All of the standard parameters for MRP work for our simulation here. So it's a very simplified version, but look at how many different things we had to click through. So this is using more of that classic ECC SAP GUI interface. Now let's look at what we could do it, and this is on the corporate side of the simulation, how streamlined it is. Enter your forecast, here's the name of the product, click save, execute MRP. Done. <laughs> Just a few clicks within it, and it makes more sense. So this is per user, the person logs on, and it already knows that they're using the product group here, this one. And they have access to these materials, and it's going to be MRP controller 103. They don't have to type it in. So here, if you're familiar with MRP, all of these different things you can change within this, the screen, it just knows based on who you are, what you need, what you have access to. Again, this is an interpretation of this process specific to the simulation that we use. Another spot, um, this is uh, again on the SAP GUI side, the ECC side, this is changing prices. So it's going into VK32, open prices folder, click on price list, choose what you want within the selection screen here, click execute, add in the prices. What do you want to sell it at? So we have distribution channels here, we have the material codes here. This is on the corporate side, the or, uh, industry side, the baton simulations interpretation of this exact same thing. Here's the material description, that's not here. Here's the cost. If you want to know cost while you're changing prices, you have to have yet another screen on the SAP GUI. And then it's divided up. Distribution channel 10, distribution channel 12 for each one of these. Here, it's in different spots. 
distribution channel 10, distribution channel 12. We've also been able to build into this current inventory and some built-in analytics. Based on historical sales, the inventory level that you have, you're going to run out of inventory in this many days. So not only is it simpler, it also gives you all the information you need within one screen. That is the user experience. That what, that's what SAP is going for. Rather than have it be one size fits all, what do you need? What do you as an end user need? And again, this is not, this is programmed. This is customized for our simulation. This is not out of the box Fiori. You have to program this. You have to design it. So those are the kinds of things that we are looking for. So, so something else to consider within Fiori. It is web-based, which means you can layer things on top of it. So Baton Simulations is the owner of ERP Sim. The biggest client for Baton Simulations is SAP. <laughs> and the reason for that is pre-sales and change management. It's within the simulation we can show people how easy Fiori is. See, look at how much easier it is. It's not scary. <laughs> so beyond that, again, Baton Simulations has some products that you can add on top of it. So it's more customized. This is customized for ERP Sim but it's showing the possibilities of what you can do within your own organization. So remember I showed you the tiles within Fiori. So this is that requirements and MRP tile that I had showed you before. So this is the tile. I showed you the app before that simplified things where it's just type in the uh, sales forecast and click MRP run. But what if you don't know how to do it? Well, within this, you can right click on the tile and an option for training is built in, how to use it. So you click on that and it says, ah, well, requirements and MRP, and it gives a description. Click next, and it walks you through the process. So there's built-in training within SAP Fiori. That's not possible in the GUI, is it? Ah, it's not possible in the web GUI. Hmm? But you can do that because you can layer on top of it. You can do those things. Another piece of what you can do is have built-in support. And the support would know exactly who you are which area you're working in, which transaction you're working with, and you just click on it and say, hey, I'm having trouble, what do I do? You can share the screen right there within SAP Fiori. <laughs> so not only chatting, but scaring, sharing screens, doing attachments. Support can be anywhere in the world, right? So wherever you need support to be, they can be supporting your people with every single thing down to a detail. Some other things, and this is an ooh and ah within all of this, within our simulation, you, you want to see sales uh, for different customers. And so this is a circle chart, and it's showing you which one is the biggest customer here. This is updated in real time. <laughs> These are the kinds of things you can do with Fiori being web-based. So the idea of sticking with the ECC. We're used to it. Well, for now, there's a familiar GUI out there. So end of life is coming soon. If you want to keep that familiarity there, now's a good time to switch. We'll wait it out. Again, you might be jumping several versions. You may not have the option of that familiar GUI anymore. So uh, this is from an earlier video. I highly recommend you watch the other videos, of course. If you're waiting it out and you're jumping in, right now it's a matter of mapping data and processes and you have an optional interface. It may reach a point if you wait too long that you're going to be adding on a lot more. So you don't really know how much you're going to need to add on. Uh, we don't know what's coming, you know, these features in the future. Again, remember, this is not SAP specific. This is not an SAP roadmap. It's general technology in general. But waiting it out, you're going to have to jump versions, and there might be even more of a change management issue. So the, uh, the next video is going to get into strategic and change management. This is video three of four. If you haven't watched the other videos, you don't know who I am and why there's pictures of Muesli, and you probably want some background on the migration as well. So I highly recommend you watch the other videos.